Good morning, everybody. Got myself a nice fresh cup of coffee. Got myself a brand new router, the Route 10 from Alta Labs. Outdoor access point that I've been playing with. These devices I've had for a while and I've had the cloud controller for a while. I apologize, I haven't done a video on it. I really like their online cloud controller, but this is a local cloud controller. And so I haven't put too much effort into it. But now that I have this, I'm gonna do a video today on unboxing this and putting this into their cloud. And then later on, I'm gonna factory reset it. And then I'm gonna do another video on putting it into this. So for now, I'm gonna go over what I have here on the desk, do a couple unboxes and show you guys some stuff that they've done. And uh, then we'll jump into setting it up and trying it because I haven't even done any of that yet. So in the box, we have our instruction sheet with a QR code that we can scan, which will get us to a quick start guide. Our beefy power supply. And I'm pretty sure all of these power supplies are the same for the switch and for this. They look very similar and the specs look very similar. I did um, look up the specs for this one and the other one and they look identical. So that's good on them for making the power supply like really interchangeable that way you can just have an extra spare i did notice that in the box here when i had a quick peek we do have three adapters these adapters allow us to go from uk the U eu so europe e the uk and then our standard us canadian connector since these are switch mode power supplies we can just change the adapter and it'll range from 220 to 110 and it'll work just fine. Auto sensing, very nice. We got some screws and I think, uh, what's in the bottom here? We got the actual unit itself, but we'll wait. Oh, we have a wall mount. Now, the one thing I really like about this is it appears to be, oh, hey, I wonder if these wall marks are the same. Oh, they are. Hey, that's pretty sweet. So that way you could use the wall marks for any of the devices. I like that. But what I was going to get at here is this device. Oh, hey, that's metal. The, th the top's plastic. That's kind of cool. But my, the bottom is metal, probably because it's used as a large heat sink. I'm not going to take mine apart because I'm going to use it. Somebody else will probably do that. But the form factor from the controller, the switch, and the Route 10 all look exactly the same, except the Route 10 has a little bit more depth to it, probably because I needed some real estate for the heat sink to keep a little bit cooler. But as you can tell, they all line up and look really, really, really sleek in a nice stack. Now, some quick specs that I was reading over the information here, and I've had that for a while. On the front of the Route 10, we have two SFP Plus ports. They're multi-gig, so it does 1, 2.5, 5, and 10. That is pretty sweet. I believe they're auto-sensing, and I haven't gotten into the software or that, but I'll see if we can actually force different um, speeds and stuff like that. We'll try that. And on the front, we have four 2.5 gig ports. Two of them are 30 watt PoE plus ports, so we can probably power one of these. And we could notice that if we're gonna run a local controller, which is this guy right here, we could power it with the router or with a switch, depending on what you have. That's pretty nice. Actually feels really nice and beefy. I like that. So, not too much to show you inside the box other than it's nice power supply. Very easy to set up, I think. We're gonna do that together. So I'm gonna clean this all up, move stuff around, grab my laptop, and we'll plug it in and see what it's like. Hold on a moment. Okay, I got everything set up. I went and created a new site, Jason's Lab, and added this switch. 
I then did the firmware update because it's been offline for a couple weeks. I haven't used it. So like I said, I used my Switch 28 or Switch 24 PoE and the Pro Access Point. I had fiddled with this once in a while, but now let's dive in and see if we can get this added to the portal and see what it's like to uh, get it all configured. So the first thing I think we have to do is power it up and then plug my laptop into the actual device itself. So I'm just gonna pick a random port. I'm gonna grab that one. And then I'll add some power. And as it's booting up, tune it off to the side here so I can see what's going on. Oh, it's got a purple light, so that means stuff. I grabbed one of my Baidai 10 gig SFP modules, and we're gonna put it in here. And I think when we set it up, it'll ask us what port we could um, choose to use for our main in. And I'm gonna double NAT right now until I get more comfortable with it. And then after that, I'll change some stuff around. But for now, let's just see if we can get it online and connect to it and all that kind of stuff. So it says, I believe, it's 192.168.1.1, but let's just see on my screen here. We'll go into network. Oh, it's already online. So let's actually test that. Terminal. Can I ping it? Whoa, that booted actually really quick. I wasn't expecting that. First time turning it on or anything. And okay, so let's uh, terminate that. Let's open up the browser. It's private, show details. Let's visit, of course. Oh, that's kind of funky. Okay, okay. Now it says on the screen here, we could use the far port for WAN 1, which should probably be a 2.5 or 1 gig port, or WAN 2 for the SFP port. Let's go ahead and put this in and see what it does. We'll add our 10 gig link. Keep my little cap. We'll add to it and see what it does. Do we have link or anything? Oh, we got link. There's a white light there. Sweet. And white, white is 10 gig. It's flashing, so it's doing something. Let's see what else it does here. So we're gonna select WAN2, because we're using that one. We're gonna keep it as DHCP, because we're gonna be double natting for now. Does your primary internet connection require VLAN? Nope. Does your primary internet connection require use of a specific MAC address? Yes, mine does, because I have five static IP addresses, and they if you add them, you get a static IP addresses. This is very important for me because if I wanted to add this, I have to take one of my other devices off in that messy rack and change the MAC address on this so that way it'll pretend it's one of those devices. I'm going to push no right now because we're going to double that and see how things are. But in the future, I'll do another video of how we clone that MAC address and put it in there. Very important because there's a lot of routers out there that do not do this feature. Or maybe they do, but it's key because in Canada, when we have TELUS, Rogers, and Bell, Shaw doesn't do it, but the other manufacturer or the other providers do do that. So it's important. So let's click no. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go no automatic because we'll see what it does. So it says connecting to your ISP. Connected, ready to go. So let's go to Oh, please set up this device at Manage Alta Inc. Well, yeah, we want to do that for sure. I'll sign in. Now, let's see if we can go to Network. Do we see our device? Nope. We don't see a switch. Oh, let's plug that in. Let's see what happens if we do that. Let's just grab this port down here. We'll plug in our switch. Maybe it'll show us that we're online. So it says new routers on here. We're going to call this, we can click on this and change the name, I believe. Oh, it must be doing updates because I don't see any links between the switch. Maybe I have to do another port. Let's see what happens if I do that. What about this port? Oh, maybe that other port is meant for something else. Hmm, okay. Hold on. Let's go set up. Huh. That's what maybe we have to do. Well, it says connected. Now there's an update. Okay. My bad. Like I said, new, 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 new. Um, I'm going to name that, call this uh, Alta Main 
router. I'll leave it at that. And if we wait a couple seconds, we should be able to go and see the other switch online. It says it's online. There it is. Let's do the update. Right now. Is it rebooting? Yep. Yeah. I can see the lights flashing. Purple. I like that color. Notice how this is purple too. There we go. Holy, that thing boot. No, we're not online, are we yet? Hold on. Oh, I gotta type it right. Ping. 1.1.11. Yep, now we're online. That didn't really take too long to boot. That's pretty freaking quick. Okay. Let's cancel that because we don't need that going. I wonder how we uh, change some parameters here. So let's go settings, maybe? System. Hey, map. Hey, that's new. I didn't know that was there. Whoa, that's pretty slick. I like that. What about settings? Can we change the color? Hmm. Oh, that's not it. System theme. Dark. Ah, oh, that's a little better on my eyes. Okay, let's go back to the dashboard. Network. We see two devices. The map is there. was huh maybe because i changed color hmm okay let's go to settings system these all look fine let's go back to network and the router's updated let's click and see if we can make any changes on anything here let's see here advanced disable acceleration what what's that for debugging purposes only disable hardware networking acceleration Okay, we don't want to do that. VPN, eh? Oh, what's that? IPsec server. Hmm, no. No. So, VLAN site? How do we change? Click on this, standard. Hmm, I mean, advanced? No. How do we change the uh, default IP address, I wonder? Let's click this. Ah, there we go. That's where we change it. So VLAN 1, default, which is usually the VLAN on every one of them. I'm going to call this main. Let's get rid of these DNS servers, though. 9.9.9.11. Domain name. IPv6. Turn it off. Reserved IP addresses. 10, pool size, 243. Hmm. I wonder where we go to change where it starts. 1.1. Let's save this. I, when I do routers and stuff like that, I start stuff from 100 all the way up to 200, and then printers at 200 to 250, but pool size, let's see here. Available IP addresses available in the pool. Least time. Okay, well, I mean, it's routing. It's online, so I'm going to dig around, play around, and then I'll come back to this video. So, be right back. Okay, I've had some time to play with it. All day yesterday, tonight. I'm pretty much liking this. It is missing some features that I would like. Number one being, I'd like to be able to set the GHCP scope when I set up networks, I usually set up a network between 100 and 200 and lower things will be static IP addresses and higher things will be printers. That's just my preference. It's not built in yet, but it'll get there. I mean, these guys just released this device and I'm sure they're probably getting inundated with options and features that people all want. They probably didn't build it with every feature that would come to mind because they don't want it to be like Unify, where it has so much stuff and clutter that just makes no sense. They want it simple and elegant. So they're probably waiting for developers and people like me and other YouTubers to say, hey, this is what I like, this is what I would want to see, and they'll build those features in there. So I'm sure that's coming. Um, I really like the map. When clicking on the map, you could see a lot of things. You could see the port. Two, we could see that my phone, I, I labeled, my desk phone and then my work phone over there, I've labeled them on these ports. 
I can see them and I can see where traffic's coming from and I can see where things are coming from. I really like that because when you're troubleshooting, you can see where things are going and what ports are and stuff like that. I like the fact that we can label things. I don't see my phone on here right now, probably because I turned off Wi-Fi, but when you set things up, you'll see things connect and then work and it'll show you if it's wired or wireless. I really like that stuff. Um, it's bouncing around because different things are coming back on because I just rebooted this switch because there was another firmware update. I do see when we go back to network and we go to router, we can click on the ports and name them. I do like that you can take the ports and manage them. So right here, when we click on the router, if we bring this down, we can click on a port and we can set it as WAN or we could set it as LAN. Right now I just put the main port as WAN, but we can change that. And I believe that it's set up for dual WAN because I believe the first port and the, the second, the fourth port is for, so you can have load balancing or you can have two ISPs. Pretty sweet. But I like the fact that you can change it. It's not hardened in there so that way you have to pick one or the other. So if we click right here, we can go WAN or we can go standard. Standard would be a LAN and WAN would be WAN port. I do have a 10 gig by die SFP module in there and it's working great. Maybe they'll send me another switch, wink, wink, or maybe another router so that way I could put this one into the family network and still play around and stuff like that. We'll just see here, okay? Also show you that we can name the ports. Uh, what did I name? Did I name one of these ports? I didn't, but I did it in the switch. So on the switch, we can take our switch, and I've put pieces in here. We can take the, port, the switch and go work phone. But there's another feature I really, 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 really like. Some people will say, well, how much is the power is a device taking? If we hover over this right here, we could power cycle the port and we can also see how much power is being taken from that port. I like that feature. Just small little things like that we can see. So I'm going to leave the video with that. As they're developing, I'm going to start coming out with little videos and stuff like that to keep you guys' attention to show you things that they're coming out and developing and stuff like that. And like I said, there's no point of putting every feature into the router because it's just going to make it messy. So for now, like, subscribe keep watching and uh oh yeah i added an access point and i plugged it into the switch i like that i really like the form factor here so good job guys and uh talk to you guys later